Okay, hey everyone, welcome. This is, uh, I'm just the, uh, newest, latest, greatest Dominion expansion, uh, is released today. The rule book has been posted online. I don't know if anyone can actually really get a hold of it today, realistically. Because it's a Saturday and it's going out to distributors today, but maybe somebody can, I don't know. But anyway, the rule book's posted online, so we get the, uh, the entire set we get to look at because the rule book's posted. Now there's a bunch of images here, you probably can't read them. Um, they're a little bit hard to read. If I zoom in, the text is just kind of blurry. Um, I'm going to go through each card and then each event, which I may refer to as cards, though technically for the game rules they are not cards. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to give my initial impressions what I think of the card, how good I expect it to be. I expect to be wildly off on some of these. I haven't really spent very much time thinking about them. Um, yeah, anyway, here we go. Just gonna start here and move across, and I'm gonna read it to you, so hopefully you can understand what it's saying. First one is Amulet. It's an action duration, so durations are back, uh, which you're hopefully familiar with from Seaside. I'm not gonna really gonna go over the duration rules here. But uh, it's an action duration, it costs three. It says now and at the start of your next turn, choose one. Plus a money, or trash a card from your hand, or gain a silver. Okay. Um, well, it, this is somewhat reminiscent of Steward, uh, and then it can give you money, or trashing, or a third option, but this is split up over two turns, and you can pick, you can pick the same choice, but you can also pick different choices. Um, like most of your classic duration cards, it's better on the second turn, because you don't, it doesn't take an action to play, it doesn't take a card slot to play. So, the effect is just a lot better when you've effectively slapped it onto a cantrip than when you haven't. So it's a lot better the second turn. Also, like conventional durations. Excuse me. Um, it's going to miss the shuffle a reasonably large amount of the time. Uh, I think compared to Steward, it's significantly worse. Um, the biggest reason is Steward, usually what you want to do with it is trash early and then use it for the other benefits later. Um, and you're usually building an engine with it. And for an engine, a card that says plus two cards is a fine card. I mean, it's not a good card, but it's a fine card. And um, this, gaining a silver, is not nearly as good as an engine. Um, it can be, but in general, if you're going to ask me whether I'd rather have in an engine a card that says gain a silver versus a card that says draw two cards, I'd rather draw two cards. Um... I mean, I think in general, that's probably a stronger effect. Now, um, I still think, I mean, Stewart is a very good card, so I still think this is going to be uh, a good card overall. Um, I think you're going to get, well, maybe you're not going to get frustrated, but it's going to be real swingy on whether you hit it turn three or not. If you hit it turn four, it, you've only gotten half as much of your trashing in and it misses a shuffle. So that's like a lot worse than hitting it turn three. If you hit it turn three, it might even be better than Steward if you could hit it turn three every time. Um, it's a lot worse late in the game than Steward. But I mean, Steward is already so good, and this already trashes you pretty efficiently, that uh, it's probably a pretty strong card. And then if you can get into a situation, the other thing is sometimes Gain of Silver is really good. So, for big money, that's probably reasonable. Uh, I saw that Geronimo said that it simulates about as well as Smithy Big Money. I'm not sure how he's programmed the logic on it, but gaining two silvers off of a single card play is not bad for big money. Um, but it's not great for big money either. Where, it's, where that ability is going to be really good, I think, is in slogs. Gain silver, gain silver, gain silver, gain silver, gain silver. Um, 
is is going to be good in a slog, but and reasonable in big money, but not great. Some of the trash, yeah. I think the card's going to be pretty good, not great. Um, usually you're going to want one, but it's usually also going to be outclassed by whatever other strong trasher, chapel, steward. Um, maybe is something as weak as forager. Uh, possibly, depending on the board, upgrade or junk dealer, although I would think pretty often you're going to want both. But okay, that's amulet. Um, looks like in the chat, JSH is saying his experience, and he's playtested and I haven't. His experience with amulet has been, it's really good, but not as good as steward, which is okay, yeah. Uh, it's kind of a li liability late game, which is a problem for it. It's he says it's good in the money-ish games where you can't quite get an engine going. Mick says, Mick Sinoc, who also tested the set, said it's a classic high utility opener. You can get both with Forager. Interesting. Um, yeah, I, I suppose you certainly can get both with a Forager. I'm not sure whether it's going to be better to go double Amulet, double Forager, or mix. Um, but if he's saying mix, I guess probably mix. Um, which makes some sense. Um, okay, second, we're going to Artificer. Artificer is, it's a, an action. Um, Um, okay, so Artificer is plus a card, plus an action, plus a money for five. Discard any number of cards. So zero is a number. Just, you know, FYI, zero is a number. You may gain a card costing exactly one coin per card discarded, putting it on top of your deck. Okay. So... Artificer, yeah, so it, at worst it's a $5 peddler, which people think peddler would be fairly costed at 4. I'm not really sure where that comes from. I think peddler would be very, very strong at 4. Um, it's not real great at 5. But this has some bonus. The question is, how good is the bonus? Um, and I think usually discarding a pile of cards to get something is not great, but when it is good, it can be very nice. Um, if you're building a draw your deck engine and you haven't been able to trash your estates, you can gain a three cost or a four cost, maybe a five cost by just using a little bit of money. And wow, that gains you a real significant card, can give you a lot of reliability. Uh, you do need to uh, you do need to play it uh, late in order to do that reliably, but I guess if you have a few of them in your deck, you don't necessarily need to trigger them all. Like, the downside is is uh, just not... The downside is it's a $5 peddler, which is fine. It's a perfectly fine card. So it's not that great... Um, excuse me, it's not that bad. It's not that much of a cost to put it in. Uh, JSH is also saying it's draw to X is cool. Yeah, I could see that. Um, keep in mind it says you may gain a card. So if you discard zero, if you discard one or something, I don't know why you discard one unless it's a tunnel. Um, Uh, and uh, so yeah you're not going to discard one unless it's a tunnel probably I mean I guess you get a poor house uh, they're, they're mentioning it's pretty good with cost reduction yeah that could be could be very good if you get one of the three cost reduction cards or I guess there's more than three now because there were two there was princess there's a couple of cards in this set that can do cost reductions <coughs> um, 
yeah, so the card is probably always this card is probably always uh serviceable, but uh not often great, but it can be very good. I'm gonna say it's probably medium to medium weak for a five. Uh but like most especially most five cost cards on the right board in the right situation, it can be very, very powerful. Um Okay. Um, hey, someone in my chat, Twack at Sonic, has mentioned also playing it in a tactician engine sounds cool. Yeah, if you can keep your deck small enough, you uh, double tactician this can um, can just get you like a province or something, uh, kind of like Vault does, and. Uh, Although, as JSH mentioned, Artificer top decks, don't forget that. Yeah, so I think that's got to usually be important for, like, you're building an engine. So I think it's going to be best for engine-y kinds of things. Because um, I think also usually you're going to have want to have uh, drawn a decent number of cards to... to really make use out of this. It's not like you want to discard three or four cards from your hand just to gain one thing. I mean, you, you can do that, but in general, that's probably not great. Uh, if, if, that's your, if that's your whole hand, like you don't want to discard most of your hand just to gain something, because you basically turned all your cards into coppers if you're doing that. Um, that's kind of my feeling, is you turned your cards to coppers, and then you got to gain it on top. Um, but basically, if you're over if you're overdrawing, that can be nice, and then it's you know it's a five dollar peddler, so that's a pretty high floor. Okay, moving on. Bridge troll. Bridge troll says, each other player takes his minus one coin token. Now and at the beginning of your next turn, plus a buy below the line. While this is in play, cards cost one less on your turns, on your turns, okay, but not less than zero. It's a duration. Action attack duration. Costs five. So, giving everyone else a minus one coin token, um, basically, You've taken a money out of their next hand. Probably. I mean, there's some weird cases where that's not it, but you've taken a money out of their next hand, which is a real thing, really, honestly. Um Like I don't I don't think it's generally gonna be as bad as taking a card. I think a money is usually not quite as good as a card. But honestly, there are a lot of turns where you spend all your money. And this this you know hurts them. Then in then the, uh, how it benefits you? Well, you get the buy twice. You don't get a money. Instead of getting a money, you deny them a money. Um. So that's a thing. Um. Probably that that's about a wash um and then this gets to last two turns uh for the for the cost reduction which is a plus um now probably that makes this just uh well the effect is stronger than bridge I'm, I'm pretty sure the effect is reasonably stronger than bridge. Although it isn't throwable and it's not kingable, because it's a while wow, this is in play. Um, well, I mean, you, the, 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 the plus buy is thrown and kingable, but that's all you're getting, and that really seems like a waste of your king's court or throne room. So, I don't think it's ton stronger than bridge in terms of effect, and it costs five. So I'm 
gonna guess that the card is actually um fairly mediocre. But obviously in the right deck it can really do things. I expect it's better than Merchant Guild, and Merchant Guild's not horrible. So this is probably fine. I don't think it's a real powerhouse at all though. Um And Deesu saying it's much easier to get combos with the gainer. Mm, possibly. Again, like the second turn is it's non-terminal, so yeah, I don't know. Just it costs five, so mm. um. Okay, moving on. Caravan guard. Um. Yeah, so Caravan Guard is a three-cost action duration reaction. It says, plus a card, plus an action at the start of your next turn, plus a money. Then, the reaction bit. Whenever another player plays an attack card, you may play this from your hand. Plus one action has no effect if it's not your turn. Okay. So, half the time, or half, half, basically this is a cantrip that it, it's a peddler on your next turn. Um, the reaction bit, honestly, since you're drawing the card back, it cycles you a little bit, but mostly it just, uh, you get the, the peddler effect sooner, which also makes it miss the reshuffle a little bit less. Uh, it's like it's a pretty small effect to react it, I think. Um, and JSH in the chat is saying it's a lot better to react it. But I mean, I guess you, you just get the effect to turn sooner. So, yeah. Um, I mean, if you're getting discard attacked, I mean, you have to discard the next turn instead of this. So, but whatever. Um, basically, it's like it's a half peddler. Like, it's a peddler half the turn, and it's uh, just a cantrip the other turns. Which, for three, is probably... I mean, peddler's pretty good. I'm going to say that's probably pretty good. Uh, except, when are you really getting it? Because... It's probably not a very good opener. Like, you need... if you're, It's purely an economic card. And if you're looking for an economic card in the opening, that is not... Uh, not all that great. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, I think this is, but but after that, with especially with cheap buys, it can be just totally fine. Um, Doctor Steelhammer asks, is it particularly good against any attack? No, there isn't any attack that I think reacting it. Oh, it's better against that. I I mean, I just don't think so, because it's not like you're really getting around the discard because you draw back to five. Um, you're just getting the effect a little bit sooner. Um, which is good, but it's not, like, completely amazing, right? Um, JSH and Mick both say it's best against things they're playing every turn. Minion, Scrying Pool, that kind of stuff. JSH mentions Urchin, which I guess, sure. Um, and that's just because it's basically, it's turning it into, I think, a $3 Peddler, which is a really good card. You know, three dollar peddler is is very good, um, but it's not like one class of attack versus another. It makes a difference. Um, I think the card's probably fine, but probably not really great. You know, it kind of doesn't do much, but it's a peddler every other turn, which is just really nice. 
Um, I think I'm usually going to end up getting quite a lot of them, just probably not on turns one or two. Um, yeah. Okay. Moving on. Dungeon. Dungeon is a three-cost action duration. It says plus an action. Now and at the start of your next turn, plus two cards, then discard two cards. So... It's a... Uh, it's a warehouse for two. That warehouses for two the next turn. It's probably a little bit better on the second turn because you start with five cards. On the other hand, if you've already built an engine, you have to play it at the start of the turn. Um, getting the effect twice is, uh, well, probably good enough that it's, this is probably just uh, quite a bit better than Tunnel. Like, sifting the third card is usually not that important. Um, I mean, that's definitely, it could potentially be worse. Um, you know, obvious synergy with Tunnel, obvious, basically everything that Warehouse does, this is going to be very similar, but you got to do it twice for sure. It will miss the shuffle quite a bit, so you're losing out on a little bit there, and if you're already drawing your deck, then maybe it's not as good as Warehouse, but... Um, I, I imagine, in general, is probably slightly better, because normally when I want to get my sifters, I want to get them early, when I still have some junk. Um, and I think just being able to do it twice is just helpful. JSH says, one thing to realize is it doesn't net you any cards even on the duration turn. True, but it doesn't cost you a card on, um, on the duration turn. Mick says he once played Dungeon Tunnel game where he activated every single tunnel that came into his hand. I could totally see that. That's got to be a huge combo, very much like, like Storeroom is. Uh, Quist says that he thinks, he's another playtester, in his opinion, Warehouse is better for engines while Dungeon is better for slogs. Interesting. And JSH says that, in his opinion, or, or the most important synergy is... Uh, with some of the, the these exchanger cards that are going to come up later, which we'll talk about later on. Mick says he doesn't agree with Quest. He doesn't think either are good for slogs. Yeah, I don't... Typically in a slog, the thing is, it's competing with silver. Um, and while sifting is fine for a slog, silver's a pretty good card. You need to have a lot. You need your, you need your deck to be thick with reasonable amount of money. So, it's probably fine for a slog, but Silver's a pretty pretty high bar for a slog, so I don't know. Okay, anyway, I'm going to move on from that now. Um, I expect this to card to be pretty good, and you're going to get a lot of it, but not like a power card, not really game warping or defining or anything, um, but a nice utility card. Duplicate. Duplicate is our first reserve card. Um, and I'm going to read the card first, and then I'm going to try to explain reserves a little bit, although hopefully you've been uh, keeping up with Donald X's previews and you pretty much know already, but okay. Anyway, duplicate. Put this on your tavern mat. It's an action, it costs four, it's an action reserve. The action part is, put this on your tavern mat. Uh, I think all of the reserve cards have that when you play them. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to go check some of them. Almost all of them do if they don't all do that. Um, your tavern mat is a mat that you have that you put cards on, almost always reserve cards you're, is what you're sticking on there. Okay, then it says, when you gain a card costing up to six, you may call this to gain a copy of that card. Okay, so what that means is, while this is on your tavern mat, this, this, these reserve cards have this line here, I don't know if you can see my cursor, um, but it's got this line here. While it's on your tavern mat, whenever 
whatever this condition is below the line triggers, in this case when you gain a card costing up to six, you can call this card. What that means is you take it from your tavern mat and you put it in play. And then when you do that, you get to do whatever effect is, is here. So this one is whenever you gain a card costing up to six, you can put this back in play to gain another copy of that card. So while it's on the tavern mat, it's not going into your reshuffles. When you call it back, you're going to discard it from play at the end of your turn, and it is going to go in. Uh, so at first, I didn't like the look of this card because it's you know it's a terminal in your deck, whatever, blah 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 blah. But the thing to realize is it's like a workshop, right? Um, especially if I get it early in the shuffle, it's better because I can wait till the best turn in the shuffle. So I know that I'm reasonably likely to, to pick up a five hand this shuffle, or I only have three now, there's like no way that my next hand's going to be worse, or if I have four now, it's very unlikely my next hand's going to be worse. I can wait till the next turn in the shuffle and use it then. But in general, you're very often going to use it the very turn you play it, and you're usually going to be buying something that costs at least four, almost always at least three anyway and you just got to get a second copy of that. And usually if you want one copy of a card, you're, you're often going to want two. Now, a lot of times you're going to want to split it up, and I want one of each. Like, I want a village and a smithy. You know, just one of each. But, um... You, uh... Hold on a second. Um, Um, okay, sorry. To get back to duplicate, um, okay. To get back to duplicate, uh, so basically, it's it's I view it it's the it's similar to Workshop, but with a lot of upside, because it can gain five and six cost cards, um, which is huge. Is huge. Um, so... Um, I, I actually think this card is probably real strong, particularly in engines, because it's a gainer. Um, you want to have some cards that you want to gain. Um, obviously, you, you want to be able to pick up lots of components if you're just using this to gain silvers. Maybe even if you're just using this to gain silvers and golds, it's worth something. But... Um, Hubby asks, is it any good with Duke? Um, it's probably decent with Duke, uh, in that gaining silver, which is something you're going to do with it a lot, you're going to duplicate the silver, is probably good. And so then it can sometimes gain an extra duchy or Duke is fine. I don't expect it's like super great with Duke, but uh, hey. Anyway, um... Hmm. 
so uh Yeah. Um, I I actually imagine that. Well, my mind has gotten a bit sidetracked here. Anyway, I think duplicate's actually pretty good, but it's uh. I imagine duplicate's probably pretty good, but um. You know, you, you need to have cards that you want to, uh... To gain, like any workshop variant. But this, they can be fives and sixes. Anyway, um... Bruh. Okay. Gonna try to get back to cards. Gonna try to refocus. My apologies. Moving on to gear. So gear is a uh, three cost action duration, and it says plus two cards, set aside up to two cards from your hand, face down. At the start of your next turn, put them into your hand. Um, okay, so there's, hold on, there's a little bit of talk about duplicate and big money games. Um, I imagine big money duplicate is better than straight big money, but I imagine that there's usually going to be a better enabler. Um, just because gaining the silver and gaining the gold is all nice. And it can reasonably often be gain a gold at a reasonable time, and gaining an extra silver is good. Um, I mean, it's probably pretty decent for big money, but just not, not the greatest thing ever. Um, anyway. So gear. Uh... Gear is like a, a moat. It's a combination like moat, double haven, up to double haven. Um, the thing to note here is if you don't set aside any cards, it doesn't stay out. So it can just be that plus two cards. Um, mostly it's gonna you're gonna want to you're not gonna want to use it um, except for the haven effect. And I've never found that haven was a particularly great card anyway. So I'm going to guess that I'm going to think that this is pretty mediocre. Um, it's probably at its best in engines which are a little bit wobbly. Um, I mean it gives you a lot of options. It's probably, I'm going to say it's probably mediocre but it's going to have a role. It can be a role player but not particularly strong. Although this is the kind of class that I actually seem to, of card that I seem to like a lot. Um, yeah. Um, and Puppy says that Gear BM seems like Courtyard BM. Yeah, it seems pretty similar to Courtyard in a lot of ways. Um, I th think it's probably little bit worse than Courtyard for big money. Um, because you don't get to see that third card. And how often are you really storing two? And then it gets to miss the shuffle and stuff. Um, it's probably a little bit worse. But 
I imagine it's relatively similar. Not seeing the third card, really, it's, it's probably a pretty significant downside, and then, yeah, I don't know. Okay. And D's two says, but you have a larger hand next turn. Sure. Sure. But that's going to miss the shuffle more. I don't know. I still think it's probably, like, very slightly worse than Courtyard for big money. But I imagine they're pretty close to comparable. Um, JSH says that having multiple on a turn is also a thing. But I doubt you really want to store that many cards very often. Like, usually, if you have that many cards to, to store... Um, Like, you just use them and do something better. But I mean, yes, I'm sure sometimes it'll come up. D Stu says, and, B and Courtyard Big Money is already strong. Um, I don't know about that. Like, it's okay. It's a big money strategy that... For big money strategies, it's one of the stronger ones. Um, which means that sometimes it's going to be right to play it. Um, just not, like, hugely... Okay, anyway, I'm going to move on now. Giant. It's a five-cost action attack. Turn your jo journey token, and this is you have a, a token that's just a journey token, and it just has a face-up and face-down side. Um, turn your journey token over, and it's, it says in parentheses, it starts face-up. So after playing this once, it started face-up, it's now face-down. If it's face down, you get plus one money. If it's face up, you get plus five money. And each other player reveals the top card of his deck. Trash it if it costs from three to six, and otherwise discards it and gains a curse. So, okay. Five money for... A terminal copper is awful. Five money for a card that makes five and then gets to either trash a three to six car cost card, which is very good, or make them discard a not three to six cost card and gain a curse, which is good but probably not quite as good as just giving them a curse in most cases. Um, that card would be real good. Given that half the time you get one and half the time you get another, the other. Um, so first of all, you, you only get the attack half the time. So over two plays, this gives you six money and one attack. Which I think is probably not that strong. Um... Now, that it's split up more, does that make it better or worse? It probably makes it a little bit better for big money in an engine. Um, probably better. Uh, especially because you can, if you really want the reliability, you can get two, but... But uh, now you're looking at... Uh, a lot of cards to draw and actions to play. So, I think the card is probably going to be fine and, and good in some circumstances, but not, like, amazing. Not nearly as good as you might think, just from reading the second half. Like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Um, by the way, so far, the ones that have been had been previewed already, Amulet had been previewed, Duplicate, Giant... And now this next one, Guide, we'd already seen as well. Actually, the next several, we'd seen all of these. All the way from Giant through Messenger, I'd already seen all of them. So, anyway. Um, guide. Plus a card, plus an action. Put this on your tavern mat. It's a three-cost action reserve. So it's just a key. And then at the start of your turn, you may call this to discard your hand. That comma is still going to bother me and draw five cards. So... 
it's a cantrip that you can replace your starting hand with five fresh cards from the top of your deck. Which is good against discard attacks, because you get a five card hand out of it. Um, it's good uh, as, like, um, insurance against having a dud in an engine. You probably want one or two for that. Um, you know, on top of being good against discard attacks, so if those are around, it goes up. But I think even in some kind of a big money-ish decks, uh, the card's probably pretty good. Like, obviously, I think you're going to want silvers first, because this doesn't actually, like, do anything. But even in a big money deck, like, being able to cycle through to your good hand on the shuffle is pretty strong. So I, I expect a guy to actually be pretty strong card that you're almost always getting and uh, gonna be pretty happy about. You, know, you can't like just build a deck around only it because all it does is facilitate your other cards. Um, but um, and it's probably also kind of good with cards that you particularly want to play a lot. So like cursing attacks like Mountebank especially like as this cartographer kind of effect where you get to cycle through to that Mountebank a lot more often rebuild. You gotta cycle through to your rebuild more often. So just cycling five. I mean that that can be a powerful effect. Um and this cycles five, it's gonna miss the shuffle more. Like it's gonna miss the shuffle rather a lot if you're just using the ability a lot, but uh yeah. Anyway, I, I, I expect this card to be pretty strong, if not like totally game warping, yeah. Um and I think you're gonna wanna call it more than people realize. I mean, people are going to be too conservative, I think, in general. But we'll see. Haunted Woods. Haunted Woods is a 5 cost action attack duration. Huh, those are action attack durations. I hadn't thought of that. I would have thought that they would have been action duration attacks. Um, okay, Haunted Woods. Until your next turn, when any other player buys a card... He puts his hand on top of his deck in any order at the start of your next turn, plus three cards. So, yeah, this card's interesting. Um, the If you ignore the attack bit, um, then what I like to look at for a lot of the duration cards is playing one every turn, is just like playing, and in this case, playing one of these every turn is like playing a smithy every turn. Which is actually fine, but not great for five. And it's going to miss the shuffle more often, so that's a thing. The question is, what about the attack? Well, um, the attack, if there's no trashing, then the attack is going to mean that uh, that they're going to have to put the green cards, basically, the victory cards, probably, back on top of their deck. So that's, um, that's pretty good, but not great. Um, you know, if they're drawing their deck, they're going to draw your deck engine, and they've got the three junk, then they're always going to have that at the start of, like, every other turn, so that's strong. Um, Mick is saying it's a little better than playing a smithy every turn because the cards come at the start of your turn. Um, and he's saying more than a little bit, in his opinion. That is somewhat offset by it being duration, making it miss a shuffle. But yeah, that's a that's a reasonable point. Is probably a a small but significant amount better than Smithy every turn, because it because it comes at the start, which lets you plan a little better. But um, these two says that he thinks probably like Ghost Ship shuts down big money against an engine. Rabble, he means. Uh, 
I don't think this is going to be as bad as Rabble against an engine. If you have three, this is, I mean, this, this isn't going to be nearly as bad for a big money. Um, as, as Rabble Chain is. And the issue is, like, if my big money deck has three green cards in my hand, I'm just not going to buy anything. I'm just not going to buy anything. Um, like, I probably don't have a very good hand anyway. Um, I could maybe buy a silver. It's just not worth it. I just won't buy anything. Which is in effect, like, if I'm not buying my silver, that hurts me. But it doesn't hurt me a ton. Um, and then if I do have a good hand in my big money deck, I'm probably at most putting one green card back. Like, if I'm buying a province, I'm probably at most, or a gold, I'm probably at most you know, putting one green card back, which hurts. Mix saying if you're playing terminal draw big money, eh, yeah, I mean, maybe, but I still think that it's not going to be that common that you're going to have two or three car green cards and eight money. I don't know. I mean, it can be a thing, but uh, I don't know. And, and, and the attack can be good, you're going against an engine and there basically if there is strong trashing then through most of the attack the attack helps them or through most of the game the attack helps them because if they can just leave back some engine component in hand if they don't need absolutely everything they can leave whatever in hand and um yeah see their next turn but that's not really that much of a help so on average the attack hurts a bit you know Overall, mm, it's probably, you know, just a reasonable, um, reasonable uh, Smithy variant for five. Um, probably one of the weaker ones, like, yeah. And, and Mick is saying Ravel has to be played a lot more before it stacks all the green cards, which is true. Um, but that kind of, I was going to say, what it kind of incentivizes you to do is, if there's other draw, then maybe just getting, like, two of these, one for each turn, and then the rest of your draw can be something else. Um, I doubt that, that you're going to want to build a, a deck where this is, like, all the draw if, uh, if there's going to be other options, because it's just not that good of a rate. Okay, anyway, I'm going to move on now. Hireling. Cost six. It's an action duration. It's the start of each of your turns for the rest of the game, plus a card. This card just stays in play. Um, basically, it, once you've played it, it's a lab every turn. Um, except that it gets around discard attacks a little bit. Well, it's, it's a lab that has the treasury effect of it's always going to be in your starting hand. M more or less. I mean, eh, it's slightly off from that. Whatever. It does cost six. You get it every turn. But it's also a terminal action to play once. I mean, obviously, that's a, f a pretty good, pretty strong effect. But uh, I think it's going to be pretty overrated. Just because it costs six. Um, lab's not that great takes a terminal to play. I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine. And there will be situations where you need to build for a long time that it'll be very good. But, in general, it should cost... You know, it is six. It should cost six because lab every turn is, is a real good effect. You know, you're starting with a six-card hand. But I, I don't expect it to be spectacularly strong. Reasonably strong. And these two mentions that lab usually play pretty often anyway, so playing it always isn't that much stronger. Well, you get it at the start of your turn as well, so that's that's another little bit of an upside. Um, getting it early, just yeah, you, you want to be able to play it as long as possible. Doctor Steelhammer asks, how many turns do you want it at least? And gosh, that's really going to depend on the 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 uh, the game. So, it's, it's hard to say. Okay, moving on. 
yes, there's more cards down here. There's even more stuff down here and more stuff down here. So we've got quite a ways to go yet. So I'm going to move on. Lost City. Plus two cards, plus two actions. Costs five. When you gain this, each other player draws a card. Um... Yeah, the card's obviously very strong to have, but uh, I think people are going to underestimate how much of a penalty it is. But it's probably also still a pretty strong card. Um, Lost City is plus two cards, plus two actions. Yeah, yeah. So the thing about this is like that once upgraded city that, we, that you'll see, people go crazy over it. And... Like, oftentimes it's not that good. Um, but obviously, it, like, it, it can be, right? Um, the thing is, I guess this is probably a little bit better since you know you're planning on it from the beginning. The level 2 city is... Uh, the level 2 city, or the level 1 city, depending on how you want to talk about it. Once upgraded city, hold on a second. Once upgraded city, uh, the thing is, like, a lot of times, by the time people get them upgraded, they're pretty much drawing their deck anyway, in which case you're not really getting that much benefit out of all the extra draw. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still benefit, but... Eh. But... Here... Um... Well, like, you're, you're gonna know that it's gonna draw you the cards, so you're factoring that in to start with. Um, I think the penalty is going to be bigger than people think. I still think you're, you're usually going to want this card. Um, the, the reason why you're not going to want this card is if you don't need the lab effect or you don't need the village effect. Um, like, if you don't need both those effects, you probably don't really want this card. Although... Usually, this card being around is gonna make you want both effects. You're gonna have enough stuff. Um, yeah. It, it, the only thing that's gonna hold me back from just getting a lot of these, not so much as the, the bottom part, although that's gonna break the tie somewhat, is it's gonna be, I need some other card more. Some other card is better. I'm gonna get that first, or I'm gonna get that now. Um, I don't think that this is just inherently the most powerful effect. It's a, it's a very good effect, it's, but it's a support effect. And so if there's something like Mountebank or Cultist or something like that, I'm going to get it first. If there's Rebuild, I'm probably going to get that over this for quite a bit. You know, some other really powerful effect I'm going to prioritize over this. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and yes, the there's the the I agree with JSA when he says the card draw is more important than the village. But I think you 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 want both. I mean, sometimes it's just a lab, and you still want it because you're just really desperate for card draw. But I don't think that's going to be very often. Um, particularly since you're lapping them to buy it. But okay, moving on. Magpie. Magpie costs four. It's plus a card, plus an action. Reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a treasure, put it in your hand. If it's an action or a victory card, gain a magpie. Okay. People have gone... There are people who are very high on this card. I think this card is a good support card that you, you almost always want. Um... But, uh, I don't think that it's just, like, game-breakingly powerful or anything. Not oppressively powerful. Um, like, particularly, I think you, you won't want it if, uh, if you've got, like, Chapel. Because you you're just going to chapel away all your treasures anyway, um, a lot of the time. And then it just gains you a lot more magpies. 
which don't draw you anything. On the other hand, almost any other <coughs> <coughs> set of cards, I think you're going to want this. Um, but I don't think it's like obscenely powerful. I know mean, I could be wrong, I haven't played with it. People are talking about it like it's it's broken. You know, it is good tra with trash for benefit. You gain more, and it's a bunch of four costs. You can you can trash, but that's kind of like rats, and I don't think rats is like that overpowered with trash for benefit. I think you pretty much want to have... I mean, the pile does run very fast, and that's kind of the thing that scares me the most about it, but it, that doesn't even scare me that much. Um, I think you want to have a reasonable amount of treasures in your deck so that this draws some percentage of the time and gaining more is good but yeah I, I agree with McSeenock it's just a thing, it's decent enough that you open with it a lot, maybe almost always this is true of something like Ironmonger um, yeah I, 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 I think very much like Ironmonger it's a good card It's it can kind of be like a lab um, it's, it's almost never bad and it's just a it's a real nice card. It could be like a lab or a peddler for four, which is real strong. Kind of similar to Ironmonger can be like a lab or a peddler for four. Um, in fact, I think Ironmonger is probably a better card, although you're going to open Magpie more because you want to start getting them flowing. Um, I think without the gain bit, it would still be good, but not great. Without the treasure bit, it would be pretty bad. Then both together is going to make it quite good, but not not like s completely distorting or anything. I think it's just a, a very solid card that you almost always want, but usually it's not going to be like, what's the difference in the game? Well, I got Magpie, or I won the Magpie split. Like, I don't think winning the Magpie split. She can't say no, has said that, that he thinks you're going to just keep buying them and buying them and buying them, because magpie split, winning it is going to be a big deal. Man, do I not agree with that. Because just like okay, so I have six magpies and you have four. How many extra cards am I really going to draw because I have six and you have four? Like, I think I'm usually going to buy one, two pretty often. Very rarely more than that. Like, yeah, if I gain extra ones, that's nice. Although I didn't draw right now. So I'm not even <laughs> sure that I'd prefer... Like, I think I'd kind of prefer to draw. Um, and then having extra... Um, having extra is like... Well, they're, each one is now less likely to draw me a card. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think I'd prefer to have six than four. Um... Like, I, I know I'd prefer to have 6 than 4. But it's not, like, as big a deal as a lot of other cards winning the split. Um, yeah, I, I think you're just usually going to get it. There's usually not something that's that much more important to start with. Um, in fact, I think you're almost always going to get it. Um, unless there's, like, Chapel. Maybe, uh, maybe in, a, in a rush... Um, particularly because, like, Magpie in a rush is going to empty the pile for you. So if they go mass Magpie, but, but generally you're just, like, you're always going to get one, and then okay. Um, and then they're talking about tokens. So yeah, if you can stick a token on this, which is some cards we'll get to later, sticking a token on this can, can make it real good. But, uh, okay, moving on. Messenger. Messenger is four cost action, plus a buy, plus two money. You may put your deck into your discard pile. So it's like a cross between Woodcutter and Chancellor, neither of which are particularly good. Three cost cards, so this is probably not that great for its effect. But below the line it says, when, you're, when this is your first buy in a turn, gain a card costing up to four, and each other player gains a copy of it. Well, the first way to... to kind of abuse this is you can get this for free if uh, you don't have to give everyone else a copy of the card if it's the last card in a stack. 
that's kind of uh, edge casey. Um, and you'd have to want this anyway, which you won't always. Um, I had thought maybe this is good for big money. Just buy messenger against silver is like a thing. You get a lot of them. Um, yeah, so I tested that some and well, okay. It goldfishes better than most other big money strategies do. The problem is, well, first of all, it's like very slightly better. But the bigger problem is like, uh, okay, so you've handed that amount a bunch of silvers. In the head-to-head, -head, yeah, that's just better for them than for you because your messenger is just like, <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, your messenger is worse than whatever card they got. So you, you don't want to do that in a big money mirror. And then against an engine, maybe they don't want the silver, but like, when are you getting this? Because they can actually just flip and play big money and be ahead of you. And silver usually, like, it's not uncommon for silver to be a bad card for an engine, but it's not that common that, like, it actually hurts them a lot. So, I don't know. The top effect can be good um, with stash, with some things. If you want a woodcutter, like, the Chancellor effect is not awful. Um, the other thing is, uh, um, I, I think it's, it's not great for big money, but it can be very good uh, for slogs, right? You buy one, you gain a silver, you buy one, you gain a silver. Like, pretty soon you're having a pretty good silver density, which isn't actually great for buying province. Like, y you still often want gold, or you need a lot of silvers. But, um, for, for a slog, if I'm like, want dukes, and my opponent isn't going for that somehow, I already know that, they can be very good. Um, the other thing is, watch the shuffles. watch the shuffles, because uh, if your opponent has just shuffled and you're about to shuffle, then you effectively get to use the card before they do. So that's some slight benefit. But again, you've got to be gaining this card. So this card has to be not great for your deck. Um, it can help run piles out, so that's going to be a tactical thing, but I think in general it's going to be more of a tactical card than a um, strategic card. Um, if you're playing a mirror, it's probably not very good because it's going to help them just like it helps you. If you're playing a non-mirror, it's going to be good, but it's going to be good for both of you, right? Mm -hmm. They can use it to gain cards that are good for their deck and bad for yours. They, you can use it to gain cards that are good for your deck and bad for theirs. But, um, yeah, sometimes that's going to be better in one direction than the other. But uh, you're going to kind of have to figure that out as you go. Um, okay. I Tim for Battle asks, what about giving someone a second potion and stuff? And this has been something that's been brought up by JSH in his article on it, his preview article, and it was also brought up by Adam as, like, the canonical thing that you do with it, and I think it's just wrong. Like, they open Potion, I don't think that you really want to give them a second one very often. Um, if they're trying to hit two Potion or three Potion, they're just quite a bit more likely to get that if you give them a second Potion, and they're reasonably likely to hit it twice. Um, they end up getting whatever potion cost card they got potion for quite a bit more. And if you're opening messenger potion silver, you actually get it slightly, slightly, slightly less than if you didn't, just because the potion misses a shuffle more often. Now you also get the chancellor effect, so that probably cancels out. But it's like, the point is, the extra money um, doesn't really help you make three potion like a lot more. Um, 
Now, it, it might help you make three potion and five if you need to do that, but, uh, you know, giving them the second potion, if you run the math, um, I, I don't think is actually good, because usually they want a lot of the three and a potion cost card. Um, JSH says he thinks it's better for someone going for familiar, uh, better to attack than than for scrying pool. But like mathematically, I mean it it it, it is probably better. But I'm saying mathematically, um, unless it's your player two, and they've already shuffled when you're doing this, um, then it in in which case it doesn't matter. Like yeah, that second potion might be okay. And like he's saying the opposite thing, but I'm pretty sure he's he's actually just wrong, because um, I I spent a few hours doing a lot of math on this. If they're going for familiar, you do not want to give them a second potion before they shuffle. They're just going to get more familiars on you faster. And like yes, they probably wouldn't buy a second potion to do that, but it still helps them. And I don't think having that messenger really helps you that much. Um, I think it's going to be more... JSH says, also keep in mind that you can send people messengers. That's true, but like you have to get two terminals to give them one. So if you have a lot of villages already, then you can give them terminals. But you need to... like It gives you more terminals than it does them, so you would need that already. If you yourself are over-terminaled, then I, if, if both people are over terminal, yeah, I don't know. That, that doesn't... I don't know. Like, over terminaling them can be a thing, but you need them to be more over terminal than you are by a pretty significant margin. Um, yeah. Uh, watchtower, yes, it combos really well with Watchtower because you can trash this. You can give them some card that doesn't, you know... You can spend four dollars to give them a curse, basically, and trash a couple things. Not great, but I'm sure it'll come up. You can also give them whatever. Um. Okay. Um. Okay, I'm going to move on now. Miser. Miser is interesting. Four cost action. Choose one. Put a copper from your hand onto your tavern mat or plus a money per copper on your tavern mat. It's kind of like a reverse pirate ship. Um, but basically this is like a, a copper trasher early and then later is a huge source of money. This card seems slow, but potentially very good. Um, it's a little bit hard for me. Like, I haven't really gone through, done a math, uh, you know, because it, it hurts you. It hurts you right now. But, I mean, that's kind of true. That's kind of true. Um, in general, first of all, it's, it's a lot better than Pirate Ship, at least in a two-player game. Maybe not in a four-player game, but in a two-player game, it's a lot better than Pirate Ship. Um, the thing is, is like as trashing, this is pretty slow and ineffective. So sometimes you do that, but sometimes like you. Pretty much, I think you're gonna want to have the money, so you get you like you need the trashing from this because there isn't much other trashing, and then having a zillion dollars later. So I mean, I I guess some engines would want this. You pretty much gonna want to have the plus buy, and you're not gonna want to have like lots of trashing. Otherwise, otherwise, you, because in that case, you probably can just do something better. Um, although this can make more money than most things eventually. So maybe it's okay. I think most of the time it's going to be weak, but occasionally it, it's going to be 
have that time to shine. Not dissimilar to Coppersmith somehow. Um, but obviously I don't it doesn't work very well with all the other copper giving cards, I don't think. Although hey, messenger miser combo. Give yourself extra coppers and uh put them away and your opponent doesn't want them. Hey. Um but copper trashing like that slow is just it's just pretty weak. It, the the thing to note is that uh yeah. They stay on the mat, so it is really just trashing them. But they also get to stay in your deck count for gardens. I guess that's something. I don't know. I don't think the card's very good, but it's not, like, unplayably bad. Um, there's going to be situations. I'm going to move on, though. Ranger. Ranger is plus a buy. Turn your journey token f over. It starts face up. If it's face up, plus five cards. Wow. Um, so, they're saying that Throne Room in this is nice. Uh, is it? Throne Room in this gets you two buys, and you draw five cards. Okay. Throne Rooming Smithy doesn't get you the buys, but gets you one more card. Um, I mean, that seems fine. Um, so this draws you a little bit worse than Smithy. On average, in return it gets you a buy, and then it's it's not consistent. I don't think this card is very good. Because I think you'd prefer to have the consistency of draw. And just more draw. Um, yeah, I think you'd rather have the consistency. It's just like, what do you... I don't know. I don't know. I want, I want actual, like, smithy. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be okay in an engine, right? Um, like, even moat is reasonable to draw in an engine sometimes if you've got a village. And this does give you plus buy. So, like, a couple of these, or if there's just, like, really no other draw and there is good trashing. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um... I, I, I'm going to say I think it's probably a bit weak, but I'm sure it's playable. Um, yeah, I, I think in general you, you, you'd prefer to have Smithy. But not always. Sometimes you need the buy. Okay. Rat Catcher. Plus a card, plus an action. Put this on your tra tavern mat. At the start of your turn, you can call this to trash a card from your hand. This card seems... It costs two. It's an action reserve. This card seems very powerful. Like, just really good. Um, it, 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 it's, it's not as good as Cantrip Trash a Card, but it's not that far behind. Like, it, it misses more shuffles. Because it... it, it uh, Sorry about that. Uh, rat catcher. So, but like plus a card, plus an action, trash a card is so good. 
and this is worse, it's going to miss the shuffle more. But it only costs two. Like, that card would be reasonably reasonably powerful as uh, as as a five cost. Um, Um, hold on a second. Oh, okay, so back to Rat Catcher. Uh, just like, Cantrip Trashing is so good, and this only costs two, like, you're just going to want this so much, so often. It's going to miss a shuffle quite a bit. People aren't going to realize that. But, uh, you know, you're very often like, man, I really want to get to five for my junk dealer. And this is not as good as junk dealer, okay? This is significantly worse. Junk dealer, upgrade. But, uh, man alive, I think this card is this card is just real nice. Um, you're going to open with it a lot. You're going to get a second one pretty often. And then when you're done with it, it's just, it stays gone, you know. You don't get a trash anymore, um, so you don't get to play this anymore, really, but, uh, yeah. These two saying, but better than duration when you call it when it fits. Sure, 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 sure. No, no, I'm not saying it's as good as a, a, I'm not saying it's good like a duration. I'm saying it misses a shuffle more like durations do, because it has to go onto the mat and then come back, um, yeah, anyway, I'm going to move on now. I'm going to go to Raise. Raise is another two cost plus an action. Trash this or a card from your hand. Look at a number of cards from the top of your deck equal to the cost in coins of the trashed card. Put one into your hand and discard the rest. This card also seems quite strong to me. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like Forager that never gives you money, but sometimes draws you cards. And it can trash itself. Um, Forager is real strong, and this is a little bit cheaper. So I'm going to guess this is probably also pretty strong. It doesn't give you a buy or money like like uh, a forager does, but um, yeah, I, I I think the card is going to be pretty strong. Um, you know, economically, it's probably not as good as forager. It's probably not as good as forager overall, but I don't think it's that much worse. And forager is pretty good. Um, Assemble Me says that he thinks that he agrees that trashing estates is pretty nice and he'd opportunistically trash coppers, but it's probably best when you can trash mid-cost cards with decreasing value like that other trasher you've bought early or that early silver you've brought to start building up your engine you'd rather thin now. And it's in a way like Apprentice, but then it's way different. Yeah, I don't think you're going to want to trash like expensive things with this very much. I think once you get to the point where your deck is about out of junk, you're just going to trash this to itself. Um, but even just to pick one of these up to trash three estates and then itself drawing a card every time, that doesn't seem bad. Um, and it seems actually pretty good if you compare it with like Spice Merchant or Money Lender. That seems really nice. Um... Raise Fortress, Pubby says, which uh, 
it, it gets you to impulse, basically. It's not a cheaper apprentice. You can't trash a province for a province. I don't understand. You trash a province and you get one of your top eight cards. One. I'm so confused. Like, one of your top eight is probably not going to get you back to province. So, yeah, no. If it drew you cards equal to the amount, then yeah, the card would be busted because it would just be a cheaper apprentice. Uh, basically. Okay, moving on. Royal Carriage. Five cost, action reserve, plus an action. Puts this on your tavern mat. Directly after resolving an action, if it's still in play, you may call this to replay that action. Um, this is like a... It's basically like an expensive throne room that's a little situational, but you do get to, uh... You do get to have a little bit more control over what it hits. That seems probably not worth it to me for the co increase in cost from 4 to 5. But sometimes you want throne room on 5 anyway. So this is, um... Fine but not, you know, it's like kind of mediocre, not great. Um, yeah. So I'm going to say this card's probably okay, but not great. Assemble Me says it always finds another action. That's true, but I guess that means maybe you can get this in decks that don't have a lot of actions. But yeah, I don't know. Moving on, Storyteller, which was my preview card. Storyteller is plus an action, plus a money. Play up to three treasures from your hand. Pay all of your money, all of your coins. Plus one card per coin paid. Um, okay, this card I think is another utility card that's probably reasonably strong but not like super powerful. Um, it can sift you through coppers, which is fine, while well, cantripping. Um, that's fine. It's probably kind of like cartographer, roughly. Um, but generally, it's going to be more powerful when you're, when you're getting more out of it, when you're drawing more cards. It's going to be, I think, really tricky to play, because you've got to figure out when you want to play it. Um, but it can draw you a lot of cards along with sifting. You need a lot of money in your deck for that, but you can build your deck for it. So, I think it's pretty good, but... Um, not, like, not like just the most overpowered thing. You have to do work to make it good, yeah? I mean, it, it's if you don't do any work for it, it's probably fine, but it's not going to be especially powerful. If you do some work, it might be especially powerful. But then you had to do work for it, and I don't think it's going to be, like, oppressively broken or anything. Okay. Moving on. Swamp Hag. Another previewed card. Until your next turn, when any other player buys a card, he gains a curse. At the start of your next turn, plus three money. It's a five-cost action attack duration. Okay. So Swamp Hag... Um, yeah, that's a, that's a powerful attack. Three 
three money over two turns is not very good. But the attack is powerful. Probably it's well it's, it's got to significantly be in its best against engines because they want to buy multiple cards more and buying multiple cards with this is like just so bad. Um, big money like if they have a bad hand they could just not do it like it's got to be worse than than most cursors. Um, I think it's worse than like. Uh, I mean, unless they're playing this engine where they're going to draw a bunch, where, where they're going to buy a bunch of cards, and they somehow can't deal with trashing a bunch of curses as they're coming in to some extent. Um, like getting three money over two turns is not good. The cursing attack is potentially good, but it's probably just got to be worse than like um, every existing cursor that that consistently curses anyway. So I'm going to say I don't think Swamp Hag is probably great. Um, and JSH is saying in heavy adventures games, it's it's even worse because there's events and there's reserves and there's there's a lot of things besides buying cards that you can do. Okay, that's good to know probably. I mean, yeah, in general I think it's a cursor. So it's probably not I mean, most cursors are strong. I think this is gonna be about the weakest one, but it's still probably reasonable, generally. Okay, transmogrify. Plus an action, put this on your tavern mat. Costs four, it's an action reserve. At the start of your turn, you may call this to trash a card from your hand, gain a card costing up to one more than it, it being the trashed card, and put that card into your hand. This is like a remodel that does it for a little bit less. It's non-terminal. You get to play it a little bit less often. Um, you get to do it at the start of your turn, and you get to... Um, yeah, I don't know. You get to kind of fit it to what you need right now. I think this card's going to be pretty mediocre. I mean, I'm sure it's fine. I'm, I don't think it's awful. I'm sure there's going to be situations where you want it. But I don't think it's going to be powerful. Okay, moving. Apparently people love this card. I'm kind of mad on it. But we'll see. Um, wine Merchant. Plus a buy, plus four money. Put this on your tavern mat. At the end of your buy phase, if you have at least two money unspent, you may discard this from your tavern mat. Yeah. So, first of all, I don't think five money for a f five cost for four money is great. I mean, it's probably good enough to make a big money deck out of it. Um, but I don't think it's that strong to start with, and then having it hard to get back is like a pretty significant downside. Um, maybe this can find a home anyway in big money decks or in engines that uh, really need the plus buy, but I don't think this is very good. Yeah, if it didn't have the the going to the reserve and and being hard to get back, I'm sure it would actually be pretty good, mostly for big money. But uh, or as a you know as a your finishing economy in um, in uh, yeah. In, a, in an engine, but uh, hey, JSH points out that um, that uh, it can um, 
if you have multiple ones, then you can get them all back at the same time. And Quist uh, jumps into uh, to reiterate that point. So um, yeah, that probably makes it a bit better. I still don't think it's going to be super strong, but uh, it's probably playable in the right situation. Okay, next. So that's all the normal, totally normal ones, uh, normal actions. <laughs> and of course, not all of those are normal. Here it's good to note that this is an action. There's 12 of these. So, 12 of these. Port. Plus a card, plus two actions, costs four. It's just like village, but it costs four. And when you buy it, you gain another one. Um, that seems pretty darn good, because usually if I want a village, I will happily take a second village. Um, yeah. I will happily take a second village. So, how does that compare to other four cost villages uh well i uh i think it's probably better than most of them like extra sifting is nice from wandering minstrel the buy can be nice and sometimes you're going to want those but in general if i want a village one thing that i know is I'm probably going to want more villages. So getting a second one is just like a pretty big bonus. Now you do have to buy it. So that's like it's worse if you're, what your plan was to gain it anyway. Because then it is just a village. But I mean come on. The card is like so good. Um, there's 12 of them so they won't run out quite as fast. But they'll still run out fast I imagine. Um, that also means there's a little more villages in the game. So you can both build a little bit bigger of an engine. Hey why not. Great. Coin of the Realm. It, it's, an, it's a treasure reserve. It costs two. It's worth the money when you play it. And when you play it, you put it on your chavern mat. And then, directly after resolving an action, you may call this for plus two actions. So, it's a village that works when you don't have... Um, when you don't have... Uh, ba -ba 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 any actions left. If you've just drawn something dead, you can call this and you get not just one, but two actions, which is, it's like you've played two villages almost at that point. But, um, yeah, so, stuff. I think that it's going to be pretty easy to look at the low price tag and look like, oh, it's just when I need it, and forget that having to have this in your deck is not great. Like, you just bought a $2 copper to put in your deck. So I don't think, like, you're going to want many of them very often. Having one to two um, to give you some insurance might be good if, if, if you have a little bit of spare money and a spare buy. Um, because once you play it, it, it is out of your deck. So that's a thing. Um, building an engine around it, like you better have some real good draw cards because these things are going to clog up your deck. So, um, just using this as your village seems pretty questionable because, like, you're just not going to have much draw. But, you know, it's a card, it's going to be a role player. Um, if you have a lot of card draw, then yeah, this thing can, can do work for you. Okay. Uh, Relic. It's a five cost action attack. When you play this, each other player puts his minus one card token on his deck. Wow. Uh, it, it also gives you two money. Um, this card seems very strong. The issue is it doesn't stack, if I understand things correctly. Um, but you deny them the next card they would draw. 
So that's usually going to be a pretty big deal. Um, it can be like it's a pretty good attack in an engine because you could just play your one. Um, in big money, like you probably pretty often going to want to do something else. But like if you think about um, like if you already have too many terminals and you don't want to get another one or if your actions you want to buy at 3 and 4 are pretty good um, I'm going to want this card uh, the thing is like it doesn't stack so it's not just like just, you just want to like pile up on lots of these generally and that's going to hurt it for big money but uh, like 1 in an engine is just an attack seems fine because just denying them a card is like is, is pretty good like usually that's a little bit better than money and so that makes this like a little bit better of an effect between the difference between you and your opponent a little bit of a better of effect than gold and it only costs five so seems pretty good i mean i don't think it's like super special anyway because like there's a lot of five cost cards you buy over gold so it's probably not like insanely powerful or anything, but I'm gonna guess it's actually pretty good. Okay, moving on. Treasure Trove. Also costs five, makes two, but when you play it, you gain a gold and a copper. Wow. Um, this is like, this has to be a big money, um, card, and it seems like a very good card for big money, like, gold and copper is usually worse than gold, and like, especially in engines, like, this, engines do not want this card, but holy shnikes, big money decks do, because gold and copper is not that much worse than gold, it's pretty similar to two silvers, and gaining two silvers every time you play this is, like, so much better than Explorer. Which is reasonable, but not good card. Like, this card has to be very good in big money. And, um... Like... Yeah. Um... Similar to the, like, just gaining lots of silvers is not huge for hitting province... It's probably not the greatest thing for hitting province, though, heck, it's pretty good. It's probably got to be, you know, reasonably good. You can't just go on this for big money, I don't think, very often, unless the board's, like, real weak. But the bigger thing is this makes your deck very thick. It makes you green very well, which means that, uh, I mean, obviously it's similar to cash in a way but probably better usually. If cash is good, this is probably better. Um, you know, but works with Trader, works with Watchtower, um, and, like, incredibly good for slogs. One of these into Duchy Duke, very good, I imagine. One of these into Gardens or Silk Road, and you, gr you just green early, and I imagine that the card is pretty good for that strategy, it's not really going to make it o powerful enough to overpower lots of engines, but like also when Masterpiece is good, obviously except for Feedum, um, I think this card is going to be good. So like, yeah, I think this... I, l I know I like this card a lot. It's probably not s really all that strong, um, just because engines are so good and this t doesn't really work in them very well. Um, al although I guess if you have a lot of trash for benefit, it, it might be okay. Um, I, I like the card a lot. It's probably mediocre, pretty good for money-based strategies, big money, or s especially slogs. Not good in engines. Okay. Next, Distant Lands. It is a five-cost... Um... Oh, and they're, they're pointing out it probably goes well with Counting House, which is... Maybe true? I don't know. Count Distant Lands is a 5-cost uh, 
Action Reserve Victory, when you play it, you put it on your tavern mat, and it's worth 4 VP if it's on your tavern mat at the end of the game, otherwise it's worth none. Okay, so this card's, like, hard to evaluate. Um, a lot of the times when you want duchy, it's like right at the end of the game. You don't know whether you... The thing about this is you're going to have to reshuffle with this in your deck and be able to play it, so have the spare action to play it, which is a pretty significant cost. But on the other hand, if you can do that, then it's just worth more. And it stays out of your deck. So... Hmm. Like... is probably a lot better in... It's probably very bad in big money, I think. Well, maybe not very bad, but pretty bad. Um, just because, like, you don't want to buy duchies that early. You probably don't want to buy these that early. Um, you know, it has some similarities to island, and you usually don't want to open island, but this is also worth four, and four is a lot more than two. You might be able to slog with this thing, where you get some treasures... And then you start getting a lot of these. You start setting them all aside. And then you go through and get your duchies. You probably need some more support than that. But, yeah. Um, the other thing is, if you have a lot of draw cards, um, like if you're overdrawing your deck, you might be able to, and you have the spare actions, you might be able to... Uh, to do this in an engine where the extra source of points really helps you catch up. Um, two, two distant lands is worth more than a province. So that's a thing. Um, in general, like, usually by the time... Like, if, if you play it like you play a duchy, it's going to be worse than duchy. So you need to play it differently. But, uh... Yeah, I, I think... It might be... 4VP might be enough incentive that you want to play things somewhat differently and just, like, green earlier. I'm not sure. It's gonna be... It's gonna be some testing before I really have a good feel for this card. Um, anyway, I'm going to move on now. Two sets of upgradable cards. So I'm going to look first at this set. Page costs two. It's an action traveler, which is this mechanic on these cards is travelers. Plus a card, plus an action. So it's just a cantrip, which is fine for two, but usually not something you'd get. You know, barring peddler or conspirator or something like that. Um, when you discard it from play, you may exchange it for a treasure hunter. So at the end of your turn, you get to turn it into a treasure hunter. Uh, treasure hunter, all these cards aren't in the supply. You can't buy them, you can't gain them. You exchange into them. Exchanging isn't gaining, so you can't trigger a watchtower or anything like that. Okay. But basically, you play this once, you probably, almost every time, you're going to turn it into Treasure Hunter, because you probably wouldn't buy a cantrip just to be a cantrip. Okay, Treasure Hunter. Treasure Hunter is plus an action, plus a money. Gain a silver f per card the player to your right gained in his last turn. So, in a two-player game, that just means gain a silver for every card your opponent gained their last turn. So this could silver flood you if they're gaining a bunch of cards. But if they're gaining a bunch of cards, they're probably building a pretty decent engine, in which case you probably don't really want to silver flood, though playing this you're going to have to. This gives you a little money. In a money deck, eh, you can... 
Um, in a money deck, it's probably fine, but it's like plus an action, plus a money, gain a silver or two a lot of times, which is okay, but not great, and probably not worth having to go through the song and dance with a page for. So, probably not really something that you're looking to do all that much. And, yeah, I don't know. Maybe you gain a lot of silver. I, I don't know. Maybe gaining a lot of silver is good, and but probably if they're building an engine, it's probably not really what you're logging to. Anyway, you're going to turn it into a warrior, I assume, most of the time. You're going to play it. You're going to gain however many silvers. It's just kind of the thing that's going to happen. I don't know. Warrior. Warrior is plus two cards. Uh, for each treasure you have in play... No, excuse me. Ex for each traveler you have in play, um, including this, each other player discards the top card of his deck and trashes it if it costs three or four. So, that's a trashing attack that uh, three or four costs. It's not the hugest deal usually, but sometimes it can be nice. Plus two cards is, is fine. Um, plus it can do multiple. Like if you have, if I play page, page, warrior, boom, now you're, you're getting maybe three. But, uh... I mean, the card seems fine. The trashing attack, when it hits, is, like, so good. Um, Okay. Um, anyway, you're going to turn it into a hero, probably. Hero is plus two money, gain a treasure. Which is fine and sometimes good, but um, sometimes not great. Anyway, you're going to turn it into a champion, because champion is... Champion is uh, real strong. Plus an action, and then for the rest of the... It's an action duration. For the rest of the game, when another player plays an attack, it doesn't affect you. And when you play an action, plus an action. So... Wow. Uh, basically, this just means um, you never run out of actions. Like, your terminals, like, yeah, it doesn't matter. You just play all the terminals. The problem is, well, and you have, like, a forever um, Um, yeah. 
Yeah. How good is it, though? Um, like, the thing is, to abuse it, you need to have played Page, played Treasure Hunter, played Warrior, played Hero, then you play the Champion, and have a whole bunch of Terminals. Like... Uh... Okay. The thing is, like, this is your your first reshuffle, turn three or four, second reshuffle, third reshuffle, fourth reshuffle, fifth reshuffle. After your fifth reshuffle, Um, after your, you know, first, second, third, fourth, fifth reshuffle, assuming none of these missed any shuffle, then you get to abuse having a bunch of extra terminals. But, like, really, can you build your deck such that um, can you really build your deck such that, uh, well, JSH is saying you need at least five turns. Like, you need more than five turns. Um, like, you'd need insane luck to get this after five turns. Like, realistically, you're not going to build your engine that fast. They're going to miss shuffle sometimes, so it's probably going to be your sixth or seventh shuffle. And, like, the game's off and over by then. Now, okay, you build an engine, and if you build an engine, you can get to it faster. You know, you can get to it by turn 10, 11, 12. The problem is, if you're really building an engine like that, it's not like you can just bloat up on a bunch of extra terminals while you're doing it. I'm not saying that this can never be good, but I'm saying it's not, like, just off the bat, like, oh, my God, this is broken. Um because that's a lot, like, that is a lot to do to, uh, to get to that broken, um, state. And then, like, that needs to be worth it. So, if you can somehow build a deck that's full of smithies and monuments before you get to, uh, champion, and get to champion quickly, like, yeah, maybe... Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's situations where it can be real good. Because that is a super powerful effect. It's super powerful. But, uh... Yeah. And, and they are talking about, like, goons. Goons is, like, a great use for this card, I'm sure. Because, like, you can just play all the goons after that. And you can just keep buying more terminals and just keep playing goons and buying terminals and scoring points, the game's going to last a long time, you're defended from attacks, like, yeah. Um, and then, okay, so they're saying, this gains silver, this gains a treasure, that's going to slow you down, they don't help you play actions, so they don't actually, um, like, synergize with this. But, I mean, the effect is powerful enough that Sometimes it's still going to be worth it. But okay, anyway, we're going to move to the peasant line. Um, peasant is, again, this costs 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are all stars because you can't buy them. You can't gain them normally anyway. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, so this is plus a buy, plus a money. And it turns into a soldier. So this effect is weaker than this, usually, but hey, sometimes you need, like, a an herbalist, and you just need the plus buy, and maybe you can just get this for this case. This you're really only ever going to get f to be a page if it's conspirator or, or a peddler. Okay. Peasant uh, is like a bad woodcutter or herbalist or something, which, honestly, this isn't that much worse than herbalist to start with, so... 
the floor isn't that low. The herbalist is not really a very good card. So anyway, soldier. It turns into a soldier. Soldier, plus two money, plus one money per other attack you have in play. Each player with four or more cards in hand discards a card. So this makes them discard, and it gives you two money. Um, you know, weaker than Militia, although it can gain you more money. I mean, this card is actually probably a reasonable card also. You're not probably going to want to keep it there, but, you know, it can be a thing. Fugitive is Lab, but then you have to discard, which is... <coughs> it's, uh, well, it's quite fine. You know, it's going to be a little bit worse than Lab. Probably better than an Advisor. Um... Like, almost surely better than Advisor. Like, yeah, th this card is actually quite a reasonable card to have as well. This is Disciple, costs 5. You may play an action card from your hand twice. Gain a copy of it. Um, that's like a throne room. And then you get to gain a copy of whatever. So that's also quite reasonable pretty good um yeah and then it turns into a teacher so in general like i think this is going to be a card that i'm going to buy more than this although this card is better than this this card is going to probably usually be better than this although this can be bonkers this card is uh about equal to this this card is probably better than this and then this card. Um, and I mean, all, all of these, again, it's, it's kind of hard to get to them, but okay. Teacher, you're pretty much always going to do this, but teacher is a reserve. You put it on your tavern mat. At the start of your turn, you may call it, so it's a terminal when you play it, which is kind of nasty, but okay, whatever. You may call it to move your plus one card, plus one action, plus one buy, or plus one money token to an action supply pile you have no tokens on. When you play a card from that pile, you first get that bonus. Wow. Like, you get to, you get to play this once, you probably either putting cards or actions. You, like, your engine is just playing this two or three times, and once you play it four, like, your engine explodes once you get to this. So I think that this line is probably just quite a bit better than the other line, actually. I'm not even sure that the effects are all that much better, but these cohesively work together better, I think. Um, because this is just like, well, I want to build an engine. And... Uh, and then eventually you stick all your tokens on something and you get a huge bonus. Huge bonus. Um, yeah. You're just going to get just massive amounts of bonuses. Presumably you're going to have a lot more. I mean, this does take even more work to get your payoff because it's this takes two turns every time, so this is a, like a long time to get the payoff. I don't think this set is actually ev all that strong either, but because uh, this this just this takes forever. Yeah, this is terminal, which kind of sucks. This is also terminal. Um, this isn't, and then this essentially isn't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think either of these is actually really all that strong because it takes so long to set up and. You could just build an engine in a lot of cases. But, you know, they're spicy. They're interesting. Anyway, now we're going to move on to events. Events aren't, well, they're event cards, but they're not.